last CR. But here's what needs to happen. This is our maximum leverage. This is the must-pass bill. We may not have another must-pass bill of this magnitude. Um, and we need to have in it language that shuts off all the funding that is automatically appropriated by Obamacare. When Pelosi said we need to pass the bill to find out what's in it, well, what's in it is automatic appropriations in an authorization bill. It's not unprecedented, but it is unusual. And so what it does over the next 10 years, it automatically appropriates. If Congress doesn't do something to shut it off, it automatically appropriates $105.5 billion, which Obama will use to implement and enforce Obamacare. Which means that if you think of Obamacare as a malignant tumor, as I do, a tumor on our American freedom and liberty, mm -hmm. that $105.5 billion will be spent to send the roots of that tumor down and grow that tumor bigger, mm -hmm. and it makes it harder and harder to rip it out. And for a Congress to have voted now to repeal every section of Obamacare, there's no rationale in us not putting language in this CR that that eradicates the appropriations. It's that simple. They've got a one, $1 billion solution. It's a 1% solution. I've got a 100% solution. And so far, I've been blocked procedurally from being able to offer that amendment in the CR. You've been blocked procedurally? Uh-huh. It could have been written into the bill. The bill came out last night. It's not in it. Um, the Rules Committee can protect it uh, from a point of order. At this point, I will tell you the Rules Committee might be influenced by the leadership to some degree, and they'll have the dialogue and make their decision. I'll get five or ten minutes before the Rules Committee to have that dialogue. Um, just want to go back. Um, there's a billion in the continued resolution, correct? Uh, and that's my estimate. I, and I, don't, I think that's going to be the case. Roughly, yeah. yeah. And it's the 105 and a half. And a half. I that, know that number. That is in Obamacare for every 10 years. Just want to get there. So. It's, it's automatic appropriations. Every year it'll kick out roughly 10% of that $105 billion. Uh -huh. and, but it's an automatic appropriations mm -hmm. that Congress has to proactively vote to shut off. Mm -hmm. And if, if very, not, very that money just keeps going to build Obamacare. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what that's what they've done. And, and so it boils down to this. In the end, uh, yeah, we have to be willing to face down Harry Reid and succeed and, and at some point face down the president. But if you look at the issues that are there, here's government will will fund beyond March 4th by CR. We'll send that over there to the Senate. And if we send it over with my language in it, then Harry Reid's got to decide if they were going to vote for it or if they're going to vote against it. If they vote against it, then we're in this negotiation with the Senate. Mm -hmm. If we get my language in it and get it passed to the president, then he has to decide, does he want to shut down all of the functions of government in order to insist that $105.5 billion are spent to implement his unconstitutional and unpopular Obamacare? I think it's an entirely different political dynamic than in 95 when the government shut down. Mm -hmm. This would be the president shutting it down for the his pet project that has his name on it. Right. And Americans have rejected it two to one. So mm -hmm. I think it's a strong political position for us. It's a definitely a strong policy position for us. And if we give up this ground, we, we lose the best ground on which to fight. And you want to go to war when your army is at its maximum strength on ground that you have chosen. Attrition is going to take our political power down day by day in this Congress. I mean, Chris Lee went home. We're already weaker there. Right. Others lose their conviction. Coalitions and the cohesiveness of the freshman class will slowly fracture over time. We're as strong now as we're ever going to be in the 112th Congress. We're not as strong as we were a week ago. That's the way it is in the real world. We ought to know that, and we ought to win this fight while we're at our strength. Very good. Okay? You got it? Got plenty. I thought I did. I get that. <laughs> Yeah, no. Do you have anything that? You yeah, I have one. Um, are there are there any efforts underway uh, within Congress to put a little pressure, urge the president to uh, support taking these health care cases directly to the Supreme Court? To put pressure on the president to do that? Uh, right. To at least uh, you know, pressure the Justice Department. It, last I've heard, the Justice Department wants to delay it, wants to go through the appeals process oh. and. As you said, for implement it with a lot of money, and it'll be hard to untangle. Um, yeah. But would, would the well, the Supreme Court could, I think, on petition of either party, could consider an expedite, expedited review of this. They've, they've petitioned that. Okay. Uh, but the, but the Justice Department, Department is arguing against it and delaying this for the reasons that we know. First, they don't want the decision. They they fear 
what i expect which is the supreme court can not find that the the provisions in obamacare are constitutional if they do it kicks the commerce clause completely out of the constitution and will become completely non-existent uh... the individual mandate component of this to argue that an end you can order an individual american under penalty of law to buy a product that's either produced or approved by the federal government or you're going to send the irs after them um, there's there's no freedom left if that happens it it destroys the underpinnings of the constitution i think by now they know it but they maybe didn't know it going in that's because you know and some of the people that are listening are going to wonder why wouldn't they have known that going in and it's because they are leftists they are liberals they don't read the constitution the way it was written or the way it was intended to be understood and interpreted and so they just think they can do anything. They think the general welfare clause lets them do anything that they generally want to do. And uh, I would argue against that, and I think there's at least five members of the Supreme Court will do the same. One little uh, follow-up. In my state, Virginia, uh, our Attorney General, Ken Cuccinelli, has argued we have a law in the books stating that it's unlawful to force Virginians to pay for health care. So we're taking a different track on uh, the court route which is why they didn't join the Florida case. Um, which case do you think has more merit? The strictly unconstitutional Florida case or the federal government is trying to supersede a state law? I would, if I thought one had more merit than the other, I wouldn't want to say. Um, mm -hmm. I think they both have merit, and I'm glad they're both there. And I think a lot of Ken Cuccinelli, uh, he has emerged on, on the national scene he has the highest name ID, I believe, of any state attorney general in the country, and that's because he's earned it. Uh, I've shared the stage with Cuccinelli, and I uh, know him a little bit privately. I like the way his mind works, and I like not just his, uh, his background and his rationale. There, we have a lot of smart people in the, in the country, uh, but his instincts are good. And his homing device on well, however that works to zero in on what's important, have the confidence to follow that direction and lead on that direction. That's good stuff. You have an outstanding attorney general in Virginia, and I don't know what his limitations might be, if any. Uh, on, a, on the other hand, the Florida initiative has 26 states that have joined it. Iowa was one of them. I'm, uh, I'm convinced that my former chief of staff, who ran for attorney general in Iowa and finished second, which I'm sorry to say, is now the general counsel for Governor Branstead. And I know that she is a friend of Ken Cuccinelli's, and shortly after Governor Branstead was elected and his team, team was put together, they joined the lawsuit with Florida. And so we're now part of that. Um, and John Bruning, the Attorney General in Nebraska, has been one of the leaders on this as well. So I just see, I see all this going, and it's about a, about a three-way approach to Obamacare. And, and one of them is all of the, the litigation that's coming primarily from the states, the, the constitutional challenges to Obamacare, the congressional approach, which I, among others, have led substantially on, the legislation to repeal Obamacare and the effort to unfund Obamacare and elect a president who will finally sign a repeal of Obamacare. January 20th, 2013, I pray, will be that day. And the third component is the state governors that just refuse to comply with this unconstitutional Obamacare and continue to throw wrenches into the gears until such time as they come to a halt. Those three approaches all together will finally starve and atrophy Obamacare unless the Supreme Court just chops it off. And an expedited review to chop it off would give America immediate relief, and that's what I'd like to see most of all. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.